So we are back with some more upcoming mods for Fallout 4. It's been quite a while since I actually posted the last iteration of the series. I had like spring break, so I was pre-recording and a bunch of other stuff going on in between. But either way, we are back. Today's video, as with pretty much every other one, is going to be sponsored by Juicehead.net. I have my own clothing store in there. We actually recently uploaded some new designs, some of them being quite cool. So I will have a link down below to that if you want to check it out. Otherwise, if you want to support this video or the channel in another way, you could leave a like or a comment that increases the engagement rating and makes it so this will get sent to more sub boxes on the recommended page for more people, and of course helps me out as a creator. Otherwise, if you've never seen the video before, I show you some currently work in progress mods by different mod authors in the community. I'm going to have links to everything I show you down below, hopefully nicely laid out. It's always nice to, if you like really like something, click on one of those links, maybe endorse the image, that makes it so it gets a little bit more attention and just shows support for these mod authors that are doing this in their free time. Starting things off, we have another update to the Service R Redux. This is looking pretty cool. This is actually going to be one of the unique variants of this. In total, it's actually going to have six, two of them being from New Vegas, two of them being energy assisted, that being one of these. And then the final two will have unique paint jobs. This is just going to be one of the six. It's going to be one of the energy assisted ones, and it is known as the Accelerator. As you can see, it actually looks very similar to the Goss R that we do see in Fallout 4. Otherwise, it looks pretty cool. Looks like it's going to be a ton of fun to use. Hopefully, there's a cool and interesting way to get it, but there normally is with Deadpool's mods. And this mod as a whole, is really coming together quite nicely. These little added features like the unique variants just are like a nice cherry on top that really push the mod as a whole to the next level and make it feel really special. So this is very work in progress, but I want to share it with you and give some attention to this mod because I recently covered this as something that was kind of a dead mod or some mods that were abandoned. This is going to be a new plasma flintlock. I showed you guys that again in a different video. I have a link to that video at the end of this one if you're interested. But either way, it looks like someone is starting up work on this concept again. It's not the same mod author. It's not the same model or anything like that. It's just somebody that saw the other video where someone was designing something like this. But since that one has been abandoned, he is making his own. And again, it's very rough. It's very early, but it's looking pretty promising and hopefully we'll get some more detailed updates on this going forward. Then we do have a work in progress FNFAL. That's a piece of equipment that you've probably seen in other video games. It's pretty popular, pretty well known. You've probably seen it in some other movies also. Typically being used on the eastern side of the world, not so much the western side. Either way, it looks really high quality. Even though we're only seeing a few things here, the mod author mentions how he has a lot of other things like attachments and cool things like that done for this. He also does mention how it's a potential mod, or at least that's in the title. So maybe it's not something we get released. Why well, imagine if a ton of you guys click down below and endorse this image, that'll only increase the likelihood or make it so the mod author feels more inclined to actually complete work on this and release it. Either way, looking really great right now. Hopefully we'll continue to see updates from this and actually get a downloadable version one day. Then we have another update or some beauty shots of T. Ares. This is another one that I actually showed you in that abandoned or unfinished mod series. This time it was actually picked back up or the concept was recreated by Trophy Hunter. The original one was by Disaster Juice. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. Some of them are a little bit on the lewd side, but it's going to be seemingly a new body type similar to CBBE. Except this one is going to be Android based and actually make it so your character looks like a robot and then you can put whatever outfits or clothing on top of that. That's just what I'm getting off the pictures. I may be incorrect in that. It may be a armor you put on or something like that, but it seems like it's going to be a new body type. It looks really cool. It's definitely going to be a different vibe for Fallout 4. I imagine some people are going to want to do custom playthroughs with this, and I think it would be quite fitting for that. I mean, there's a theory that the player character himself is a synth, so it's not that far-fetched to actually play as a robot. Or maybe you already are playing as a robot. Who knows? This one's pretty special. We do have the T60 HD. I actually used a few of these images in my thumbnail, so I figured I should probably actually cover what this mod is. It's going to be another work in progress mod by D. Polari. I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever, I guess close enough. He's been posting a ton of HD reworks of existing mods, some upcoming mods. In the past, he actually posted something for the Institute Power Armor, and now, of course, the T60, a vanilla power armor, but still one of the better looking power armors in Fallout 4. As you can tell by these images, the textures are getting a pretty massive overhaul. It just looks way higher quality, the same thing he has done in the past with other mods. One of these images actually labels it as complete. It was uploaded on the 31st of March, so maybe we'll actually get a release for this one sooner rather than later. So it seems like more of a concept for a mod than anything else, but it looks pretty cool. Basically, it's by Alex Scorpion, and when you point a piece of equipment at dog meat, he'll actually get violent with you because, well, you're pointing something at him that is deadly. I don't know if he's actually planning on releasing this publicly, but I like this. This is something I would use in my game. It's a really small change or feature, but I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool and makes the game feel a bit more realistic. 
So finally, for the one many of you guys clicked on this video for, we do have some more updates to Fallout New California. This was actually posted on April 1st, and although everyone else was joking, this is largely serious. There's a few jokes intermixed. Either way, they do mention that the beta is getting even closer to a playable state, and they're going to have a public beta coming soon. That's a direct quote from this post. Outside of that, they actually go over some of the other facets of this mod, one such being the lines of dialogue. So Fallout 1 had 20,000 lines, Fallout 3 had 40,000 lines, New Vegas had 65,000 lines lines, New California is going to have 14,000, so they're saying it's about one-fourth the size of a normal game. Just showing how expansive this is actually going to be, even though it is just a fan-made mod. We've also mentioned how their workload is way less, I know a lot of them were getting very stressed and pushing themselves in the past, so it's nice to see that they're finally able to take somewhat of a break and focus on some of the easier aspects of mod creation. They also talk a little bit about the map and how there's vast spaces of open desert as well as settlements intermittent, and also how there's going to be some of those high-level zones where there's going to be very difficult enemies and if you're not well equipped that you can't go through them. Something I would imagine is similar to the glowing sea in Fallout 4, potentially even a more hardcore version of that. And then of course, depending on which faction you side with, whether it be a raider or the NCR, you can attack the opposing faction's bases and they'll have enemies respawn and all around just seems like there's going to be a ton of things to do with this mod, not just the main story. It's not just going to be RPG based, there's also going to be some combat aspects and other fun things to do, which makes it seem very promising. You can find a link down below to Fallout New California's mod DB page. They have really created something amazing here and I would definitely give them some support if you do have either some extra money if you want to donate or just like the page or check out some of the stuff they've been posting. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one, but before we end off this video, one thing I actually do want to talk a little bit about is how a lot of unconscious factors go into your decision making that you may not even realize. I'm getting a bachelor's in psych right now, I'm probably going to go to grad school for something pertaining to psych, and one thing I've consistently found through all the different classes I've taken, and I've taken a lot of psych classes at this point, is how often I'll learn about something that explains a phenomenon that like I experience. It's like the explanation for something I'm already doing, and it's always really interesting to me. So one major thing in this is unconscious factors in decision making. These are going to affect different people differently, that's going to be part of your personality and many other things. But either way, there's three major ones and that's going to be first and foremost social validation. So what are other people buying? And then more importantly, do you care what others think about you? Do you want to own the same thing as other people? Many people have MacBooks. Social validation is a huge part of that. Everyone else has MacBooks, so I'm going to have a MacBook. Obviously that's more true at college than in high school or whatever, but either way, if you go to any college campus in the United States, I imagine you're going to see a lot of MacBooks. Social validation is one of the reasons for that. Then we also do have commitment. So it's gonna be kind of staying true to the type of person you are or you wanna be in the eyes of others. If you want other people to see you as being really smart, you may make decisions according to that. Or even something that's a little bit more easily to apply to your own life, if you want people to think you're technologically oriented or like anti-Apple, you're probably going to buy a different brand even though the latest Apple product may be a good deal or something like that. You probably won't even consider it because of the view other people have of you. I know of a lot of people that don't buy Apple products because of the look it gives alone. And then finally, reciprocity. That's more or less your obligations or social debts as they're known. So like let's say somebody's done a bunch of favors for you, you may want to do something for them and that may be a factor that you don't even realize is a factor. Maybe you're being nice to someone because you were mean to them in the past and you feel bad about it, but again, that may not be a conscious thing. Sometimes it definitely is, but there's also plenty of times when it isn't. Either way, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. As always, I thank you guys for watching, I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later!